We are live. Good morning and welcome to Surefire Saturdays. Here we are on another Saturday morning. Yeah, a little bit of a colder Saturday morning than last. I don't know if you can catch it out of this window here, but we got snow. Yeah, it's we got we got snow here. And we, we've already had actually we, we have the best, I think we have the best farm in the world yeah. because we've already had a couple bucks walk through our backyard this yeah, morning. We were getting ready this morning, we, we started walking, we looked and we're like Oh, big, big buck, buck, big buck, buck big buck. <laughs> um, now listen, we've got a great recipe for you today. We're always teaching wild to table recipes. And our wild today is going to be something from the garden. So we're gonna use a buttercup squash and we're going to make this beautiful uh, quick bread. So if you've ever had banana bread, zucchini loaf, yep. uh, you know that lemon poppy seed loaf? Yeah, yeah, mom makes a good one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So exactly the same principle. The difference is that in this case, we're going to use the roasted buttercup squash to make yep. that puree, to make that beautiful flavor base. Now, I'll be learning along with you guys today because I had no idea that, I, first of all, I thought pumpkin pie was just what they called it. I didn't know that you actually came from pumpkin. Exactly. So, I'm, so I'm be learning with you. do me a favor, grab one of the butternut squash out of the fridge. Now, if you can't find a buttercup squash, um, one of the things I want to encourage you to do is check out with your local market, your local grocer, and try to find, if you can, what are called sugar pumpkins. So there's a number of different varieties. For example, one that I love is Cinderella. They're naturally sweet. They're perfect for roasting. Now, uh, what I want to do, I want to go, Dakota, are we ready to go to the barbecue? Yeah. All right, okay. So first of all, Dakota, come over and say good morning. Um, so as you well know, we've, we've moved surefires from Wednesday nights. Yeah, to Saturdays because we just want to enjoy Saturdays with all of you fine folks. Yes, Thanks. that's right. We want to take Saturdays back. We're taking, sa hashtag, we're taking Saturdays back. <laughs> um, if you joined us last week, you've already heard this, but I'll say it one more time. Uh, Saturday mornings when I was growing up was all about watching hunting and fishing shows. You get yeah. up early, no TiVo or yeah. recording time. You had to watch it when you, when you could. So Saturday mornings was a time, it's a great time of the week. The week is in, the, in our six, it's behind us. Yep. Um, you know, I say in our six, and that uh, brings up something. Um, in just a few minutes, we're gonna observe a moment of silence. Yep. And when we do, we wanna honor uh, all the veterans in Canada, uh, actually in the whole Commonwealth, yep. uh, for Canada, Remembrance yeah, Day, yep, yep. and also in the United States for Veterans Day, right? Yep. Um, so we'll get to that in just a minute, but just before we do, let's start with what we were up early this morning yeah. doing. We fired up the Coyote Grill, and what, uh, you know, with the holidays coming up, actually, one thing we want to do, too, is say this. So this recipe, we're doing a sweet recipe this week, because next week... Yep, we're oh, yeah. going to be doing a Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. And so we don't know how long we're going to go live for, it's maybe two, be, maybe three hours. hours, but we want to give you guys the tools to create the most magnificent Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving dinner. And while you, whether you're using a butter ball or a wild turkey, yeah. wild turkey preferred. Yeah. <laughs> but if you can, we're gonna show you how to cook all the sides, the turkey, yeah. and maybe a couple desserts. Uh, definitely, and, and, and we're gonna try and get my wife, Cynthia, who's a pastry chef, <laughs> to get her butt in here. She's got a bourbon pecan pie that if she would oh, teach yeah. you that, yeah. I'm telling you, you'll That's adopt good. it as your own. What we'll also do too, I think we should do is we'll take our wild turkey yeah. and we'll take a, uh, a farm turkey 
and we'll show you the difference side oh, by yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, side good. by side, it's yeah. undeniable. So next Saturday, I want you to get a big pot of coffee, want to get a pen and paper, yep. and you want to come and you want to watch our Thanksgiving yep. special. I've always wanted to have the yep. Thanksgiving special, and now special we're going to have it. Well, it. It came because one of the Botech staff, who was it that texted you? Yeah, uh, actually, I got to check my notes. But yeah, one of the Botech staff, he's like, yeah. oh, man, listen. I have to cook. I, I've yeah. been tasked with uh, turkey dinner, and you know, a lot of us we're a little bit, a uh, little bit scared about turkey. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the common things are it's tr too dry. Yeah, people uh, are always worried about drying it out. And yeah, and for me, yeah, Sin, go ahead. We got a question. Good morning from Kentucky, from Penny. Good morning, Kentucky. Yeah. Fry it up, yeah, fried turkey, that's a good fried idea. Turkey. Fried turkey is good. Uh, my friend from Kentucky, uh, if you're anywhere near Cubbage, my uh, great-grandmother was from Cubbage, Kentucky. Yep. So let's have a look at those squash. Um, so we, we were up early, and we'll show you this in just a little bit. So you can take any squash, so it could be butter uh, nut, could be butter cup, could be a pumpkin. Uh, again, if it's gonna be a pumpkin, it's gotta be one of those sugar varieties, yeah. Bay. So those are naturally sweet. They're meant to be roasted. If you try to use a pumpkin like you might have used maybe for a jack-o'-lantern, you're not going to have very good quick bread. Um, so the quick bread, the nice thing about a quick bread is that you don't have to wait for the yeast to rise. Oh, really? Yeah. So when we're doing breads, what you have to do is, you know, you allow the, the yeast to rise and for about an hour, you let that dough rise and punch it down, let it rise again. Quick bread uses baking powder, bicarbonate of soda. So that what that does is it creates, there you go right there, that's so beautiful. Oh, yeah. So we made these this morning. Uh, by the way, the Outdoor Chef, whenever we're doing these recipes, we're literally, we've got, so this was, this was the first one we did this morning. And what I did with this is I used white sugar. And I started thinking, you have all that kind of caramely flavor, you've got that roasted flavor, why not use brown sugar? Yeah. Brown sugar, by the way, has either, has molasses, it has a lot of unique flavor levels. So when you use brown sugar, it's very powerful. And in this case, I think you're really gonna like it. You ready to go to the barbecue? Yeah. Okay, let's have a quick look. Now, you'll see we rolled the barbecue up close to the deck here because it is freezing out there this morning. Um, actually, if you can look out just past it, can we, can we see that corner down there? Yep. So that corner down there, you see that big poplar tree? That's where we have one of our tree stands. And it's because we've got, an, we've got a, a game trail at the corner of the property uh, to the left. And they just come through here. I, I like to call it, it's like the white tail. It's like the white tail 401 or the yeah. white tail 75. Yeah. It is a highway. They're just coming right here. We had no idea. So I fired up. Uh, one of the things about uh, Thanksgiving, and we'll start talking about that right now, is you need additional cooking space. So when your uh, oven is burdened, you know, our friend from Kentucky said uh, fry it up, right? Yeah. So if you've got a deep fryer on point, loving yeah. the deep frying. Uh, but if you need if you need to bake or roast, the barbecue is that great extra hand, yeah. and you get the same kind of convection uh, motion in a barbecue that you do in a regular and oven. You can, and you can use it any time of year. A lot of people don't like to use it in the winter, but as you can see, we got snow yeah. on our barbecue this morning. So these have just cooled off nicely. Now um, you can see that they're si see how the sides are pliable. You know that they're done. Um, hold that for a second, right there, Bay. I'm just gonna grab a fork. And this is why you got a close up there. Why you got a close up there. This is what you really want to do. You want to make sure, and that smell good. You want to make sure, yep, sure enough, we've got all that. Just poke it. And what you want to do, don't poke, this is obviously thinner. So this is going to be done. What you want to do is poke it in that thickest part. And if that passes through nice and smoothly, you know that that's ready to go. Yeah. So let's start by harvesting this. Let's go over to the uh, food processor. And uh, Bay, I'm going to put you on this right now. Um, so what I've got now, if you don't have a food processor, you can just sit that, yeah, right there. Um, grab yourself a spoon. If you don't have a food processor, what you can do is you can use either a blender or you can mash it by hand. The difference between this and, say, for example, a ripe banana is that there's some fiber in here, so we want to cut that up. So what I've got done is I've got my uh, Cuisinart uh, food processor, and it's fitted with the large blade. So what I want to do is I want to cut through all of As I said, you can use a blender or you can use a stand mixer. You're going to try it? Mm -hmm. 
good. It's good, eh? Yeah. So it has a it has a kind of flavor profile that allows you to use it with sweet. So all we're gonna do here. You can really see here as you try it just raw the way it is, a brown sugar caramelized on top or sugar would be amazing. It's already kind of sweet. It's really yeah. different from this squash, but so, it's really good. So literally you see that beautiful and this is what gets me excited. Now listen. That backyard that you saw back there, next season, if you're watching The Outdoor Chef, about next August, yeah. August and September, we're going to be lining these out in hundreds and hundreds of other vegetables. Yeah. Um, we are doing wild to table, but we're actually growing as well. Grow um, exactly, <laughs> grow to table, farm to table. So what you'll do, you see this beautiful flesh. You want to make sure as you harvest this, you want to get every last bit of it. So I'm going to put Bailey on that. You can start working away. Yep. It's always good to have a uh, second hand in the kitchen. Just take your time and you don't really want any of the outside flesh, but that little bit of skin that develops just on the surface, that's just fine. And get myself some more coffee here. Okay, so this is what I have to tell you. So we're doing two recipes today, but with the same bread. So we've got this beautiful quick bread. So the reason I always do two of these at a time is when I'm doing the second recipe, which is a bread pudding. That's right, a bread pudding. So you can use a conventional loaf with, with creme anglaise, which I can show you to make today, which is just a custard cream but you can also use this quick bread. And let me tell you, when this caramelizes up with that beautiful custard in it, this is absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorites. We served it in restaurants years ago this time of year. It's a great way to acknowledge what's going on. You know, when you've got stuff like this coming out of the fields, yeah. why wouldn't you put it in a yeah. dessert? You always try to cook with that's fresh in the grocery store, that's fresh from your field too. Yep. So just if you just get the majority of it off yep. and then start on the other one, I'm going to show you how to do this prep. So when you get a, uh, a squash like this, so again, this is a buttercup squash. Uh, Cindy was kind enough to find these. Cindy's my wife. She was kind enough to track these down for me last night. Um, what you want to do is make sure that you're holding it firm. You want to make sure that it doesn't roll around too much on you. I'll show you a little trick. One of the things you can do, is you can just take and nick off a little piece on the bottom. And that'll kind of help you hold it still. See that? Isn't that make it easy? And then make sure your knife is good and sharp. And then pick a uh, center point, kind of tap that down a little bit, and then just run your knife through it. And as you do, you'll reveal, oh, look at that. Now listen, that doesn't that just make you love fall? For me, when I see those colors, it just screams fall. What I'm gonna do, I'll tell you what, I am going to hang on to those seeds. I was just thinking about it. I didn't do it this morning. But these are, the, these are the pumpkin seeds that you want to roast. So all you do is just pick them out of here and uh, then just lightly oil them and roast them at about 350 degrees until they're nice and toasty. I always use some spices to just give them a little dance, just dance up that flavor a little bit. So you can see this. I'm just going to take that extra little bit of flesh off there. Just make sure I get all of that. I love the smell of these. Even raw, these are absolutely beautiful. I just, I just took the last bit of the spoon there. It's, it's, so good. it's good, eh? So just take those seeds out. This is going to be the same, whether it's squash or pumpkin. Uh, and we'll just keep harvesting these out. So these pumpkin seeds, these are going to be just beautiful. Pull that out. Man, it smells so good. So if you're just joining us, we're just going to take, as soon as I'm done this, um, we're going to take a minute, and uh, I know we can't uh, observe at 11, uh, 11 this morning because of our, the time of our broadcast, but we want to take a minute, and I just want to acknowledge um, a few people. Uh, first of all, in, in my family, uh, my cousin, for his service in our military. Yep. Um, let's face it, folks, without uh, the brave men and women in our uh, in our military in our long histories of our countries um, we could not um, we could not enjoy the freedom um, that we we so sometimes casually 
maybe take for granted. So that's why it's so important to take a moment. Um, you know, and today is a good day to maybe reach out to a person, uh, maybe a neighbor, um, a family member. Well, I personally want to thank my cousin Stephen for his current service. Um, I'm thinking about um, my wife's uh, Uncle Bernie, um, who served in Vietnam. And um, my wife's uh, grandfather served in the Korean War and I believe World War II as well, eh, hon? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of people that we really, really... Yeah, I've, uh, got, I've got a, a friend I talked to not too long ago who just joined the military. I'd like to thank him as well. His name's Elliot. He's a great guy. He's doing a good, good, good thing there. And uh, Dakota, you've got a, a, a good friend from uh, high one school. Of my, one of my friends from high school, she, Taylor Brockenier, she's become an Air Force pilot here in the Canadian uh, Royal <laughs> Air Force. So, I mean, I'd like to thank her for her service as well. I know... I see her journey that she had to take to become part of the uh, Air Force, and let me tell you, just the journey alone to yeah. just do what they do is, is hard enough to begin with. Yeah, yeah. so having said all of that um, and, and shared that, we're just going to take uh, a uh, moment of silence now. Uh, so if you could uh, join, uh, join with us, and we'll just take a moment of silence here. Thank you for that, and uh, and again, thank you to all of you who are watching uh, for your years of service and dedication. It does not go unnoticed. Now, let us see if we can dress that up a little yeah. bit with some beautiful sweet bread. So now, uh, just to uh, re-engage here, um, we've got this cleaned up now. It's really simple. I'm just going to take, so you can see Bailey's got this completely yeah. cleaned off. Take it, and you can, you could potentially, if you got a really kind of uh, new uh, squash. You can even eat the flesh. But what I want here is a nice, consistent color. You can eat the flesh, right? You can, yeah. It's, it's actually, in, but again, it depends on the age. So what happens is, um, as they're stored, if they're new out of the field, just like potatoes, for example, um, if they're new out of the field, the skins are very are quite nice, and actually there's a ton of flavor. Yeah. But when as they get a little older, so these are actually pretty new, so you can see the flesh is actually pretty thin. Yeah. Uh, so just sit that down on there, and then I'll take and put these seeds up here. I always just take the knife, careful with the knife as always, but I'm just going to yeah. take that little bit off the side there so it sits flat. So we'll sit that flat. Babe, brush out with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And all that olive oil do, you might think, well, why are you putting olive oil in something uh, sweet? Uh, there's some, here you go, bud. Um, well, the, uh, the thing about olive oil, uh, if you think about it, the, the, the fruit, the olive, <clears throat> it actually has some really great properties uh, as it comes to, so you can actually use olive oil um, kind of in place of vegetable oil. You'd be surprised, even with things like muffins and baking, what olive oil will do. It's beautifully flavored. So that can go back in the barbecue bay. I'll get you to put that in the barbecue. So we're gonna set that barbecue for about 325 degrees. It's not something I wanna rush. I want this to be low and slow, and I really want it to be finished. So let's have a quick look. Just make sure to uh, pop it in. Actually, we don't need to have a look at that. <laughs> Um, so you can see here with uh, what Bay's harvested that uh, that that yeah it's cold out there isn't it? Um, so all I'm going to do with this I've got a little bit of this melted butter here so I'm going to put about a tablespoon of that in. Just set that over there. Just mix that up a little bit. And then it's really important again if you don't have a food processor maybe take the time use a blender um, but a food processor is going to make short work of this let's have a quick look here and and we'll see just how quickly this comes together So as this starts to come together, you can see that just gorgeous color. But one of the important things at this point, like many things we talk about, is you don't want to rush this point. So this is a point where the texture is now as important as the flavor. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I happen to stop early, 
This is, oh my gosh, it smells. Are you looking at the color of that? Just look at that. That's amazing, that color. It's so bright and so vibrant. But one of the things you'll notice in there is there's still some fibers. So I want to make sure that that texture is completely cut down. So what I'll do is I'll continue to uh, process that until it's silky smooth. Oh man. You can just watch that texture come together. Right? Oh yeah. So what, yes. Hungary, well welcome Hungary. We, uh, we love our, uh, our European roots. Uh, part of my family, part of my family came from Holland. Uh, we've got good friends in, uh, in hung from Hungary as Hungary, well. Yep. Welcome, Hungary. Um, hung you're hungry and hungry. Yep, yep. <laughs> There's that. It's so for cool. You. To, we had someone from Sweden last week. So yeah. obviously, you know, there's a lot of fellow hunters and anglers across the entire world. Yeah. Do me a favor and uh, throw in the comments there. Let us know where you're watching from right now. And, uh, and we'd love to uh, give you a shout out. Yeah. Uh, throw your name in there and where you're from when you, have a, yeah. when you have a minute. By the way, if you have any questions, the most important thing about the Outdoor Chef and Surefire Saturdays is about uh, making and creating a forum for you to ask questions. So ask anything, even yeah. if it's not related to this recipe, yeah. ask it now. And I'm curious as to what you hunt or angle in Hungary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, let us know what you're after in Hungary. Okay, here we go. So let's have a look inside here. Oh, oh my man. gosh. See, you gotta show them that. You gotta see this. Just like that's, come on. That's like butter. That's like butter. I love it. So, you know, you don't have to, and this is not a knock on canned pumpkin products no, no. in any way. Um, you know, one of the things about food, there's no room for food snobbery here at no. the Outdoor Chef. You use whatever you want to use. But if you have a simple barbecue, you can just literally slice that in half, put it on your barbecue, yep. more or less forget about it, yeah. for about an hour. It takes about an hour. Yeah. Um, make sure it's about 325, and you're going to get this beautiful texture. Let's have a look at that one more time. I'm just yeah. going to, you can stay there, babe, because I'm just literally going to, oh my gosh, look at that. Look how it just sticks to that spoon stage. Isn't there, that too. spectacular? Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let's start with our, mm, tastes good too. Let's start with our recipe. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the principles of baking. Now, when you're baking, you've always got wet ingredients and dry ingredients. And there's always a lot of questions yeah. about this in particular. Yeah, so if you don't mix your wet and dry ingredients separately, what happens is you end up, I'm sure you've seen it, a, pea, a loaf of bread that you cook is like four inches higher on this side than this side. That's because you have pockets of baking powder or baking soda. that. Yep. So that means you didn't mix your dry ingredients well enough so that you ended up with a pocket of that ingredient. So Absolutely. That's why you need to mix them separately. And so what happens is that if you mix your liquid in, what you're going to get is not a proper even mixture of the dry ingredients to begin with. Same to go with the wet ingredients too. Exactly. So what I'm going to do, this is a great recipe. So if you're taking notes, this is the time to take it. So you can use this as a base for just about any of these quick breads. So we've got all purpose flour, yep. um, get unbleached if you can, it's uh, healthier for you. So unbleached AP flour, and, and we're going to do uh, three cups. This is funny, this technique, I remember when I was a kid, they had a class called home ec. Oh, what's um, that? Uh, home economics. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So um, I can tell you right now that my home economics teacher, and if she's out there, I love you because you inspired me. Um, but what I, was her name? I, I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Okay. Uh, but you know what? Well, I'll, I'll make sure to get. You got a text? Text Rob. Text Rob will probably remember. Yes, Cindy. We have a shout out from Halifax. Halifax represent. Yes, thank you, Halifax. Stationed in Pensacola. Thank you for your service, sir. We appreciate it. Is his name, sorry? Dylan Wade. Dylan Wade, Dylan Wade yeah. thank you for your thank service, you for sir. Your service, sir. Uh, so, Dylan, funny story about. Uh, I wonder if he can cook this kind of food at his base. Yeah, I'm sure he can. <laughs> so, home, ec, uh, home, ec, home economics. Um, I was, I'm sure my teacher she was sure that I was never yeah. going to amount to anything. So she, she, she taught me how to do two things, 
clean tables, yep. and I remember this distinctly, using the back side of a knife to make sure you get your dry ingredients. Now, my wife... Do you have a knife in school? <laughs> exactly. My, uh, my wife, who's a pastry chef, um, she will... I always try to be a little bit, um, let's just say, uh, uh, freewheeling with ingredients. And she always reminds me that when it comes to ingredients and pastry, you absolutely have to measure with precision. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, so one of the great things that happened again this morning, so we had that loaf, grab that one. And so what, I, what we were doing as we were testing these, um, we wanted to, so this we did with white, and you can see here actually we, I, we increased the amount of um, baking powder from this one to this one. I wanted more volume, so you can see how beautiful that is. So we increase this. This is the exciting thing about the Outdoor Chef and Surefire Saturdays, is we're throwing recipes out there that we are testing in real time. Um, so anyway, I'm going to keep going here. If you can just spoon, we just need a, we, I need a full cup of that. And then I've got here a uh, tablespoon of baking, of baking powder. I keep feeling my phone vibrate. I think Botech's still doing more live hunts. Is that right? <laughs> well, good luck to the Botech guys. I know they're out there. I saw some beautiful muleys this morning. Yeah, they're out there chasing muleys out in South Dakota. Be sure to check that out, guys. You don't want to miss a live hunt with them. Yeah. So here's uh, one tablespoon going in, and that's of baking powder. And then we get to the spicy stuff, and I love this. And so I want to work on, and just you'll see my notes here, so just so you know that, that we're making this up as we go along. Uh, I've got uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon. I love cinnamon, uh, especially with, uh, with this, like Bailey pointed out. Oh, yeah. The cinnamon with, uh, it's a real common thing to take uh, brown sugar and cinnamon. So you were explaining to me earlier why you switched to brown sugar, right? Yeah, so the brown sugar is, uh, you know, you still have the sweetness, but what you get with brown sugar, you get an element of flavor. Molasses, and of course, uh, just in case, I'm sure everybody knows what molasses is, but honestly, you know, we never take anything for granted here at The Outdoor Chef, so if you don't know what it is or you haven't seen it, um, now, molasses, are, you know, you're using, you're using sugar beets. Mm, I love molasses. Oh man, it tastes so good. Um, but molasses, if you take it and, and just take just sugar and then you go like molasses and you just taste it. Like literally you just, you just take it and you just taste it. You're like, yeah. compared to just has a ton of flavor. That's so much flavor. It's yeah. caramelized. Oh, Bailey's coming around. Okay. <laughs> so using the brown sugar, you've got some really nice additional notes of flavor yeah. going there. Well, and that's what we talk about consistently is when you want to make treat when, when you want to create great dishes, it's just about adding levels of flavor and taking your time and giving it love. So if you can add something, switch something as simple as switch brown sugar to white sugar, yep. that is a step that is crucial to elevating your dish. Yeah, now good point, thank you for reminding me. If you use this recipe and you're going to switch it, let's say, to lemon loaf or yep. banana loaf, switch back to the white sugar, It'd be yep. a little too powerful. So what I have here is some salt, so I just need a pinch of salt. Um, always using some salt when baking. Um, salt, of course, the same way it brings out flavor in a steak. It's going to bring out flavor in this bread as well. So I put in, now I'm going to do these uh, spices. So what makes this a spiced, a spiced pumpkin bread pudding, that's what we called it. Uh, bread pudding's coming up, but we're just doing, the reason I always do a couple loaves is generally speaking, the first loaf gets eaten, yep. and so then the second loaf is the one that uh, we use to make the bread pudding. So this is a two teaspoon measure, putting the two teaspoons in. And then that's of uh, cinnamon. And then I've got, I love allspice. Oh, allspice around the holidays, man. Yeah. That's just something else. Yeah, it's a must. Um, you can see the difference in color down here. Yes, Cindy, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Anthony. Yes, the final recipe um, will be posted to the page along with uh, the hero photos, so the finished photos. 
Um, and then what I have here uh, is ginger. So ginger is something that's very unique because it uses, it gives a little bit of heat. Yeah. Um, so it's almost like adding like an element of pepper. So yep. this is ginger here. Now all these are ground. It's like a sweet heat. Yeah? It is a sweet heat. It's very pleasant. Um, and you know what? When you when you think about uh, flavors like gingerbread and th that yep. sort of thing, it's uh, it's actually just perfect. So so let yeah have a quick look in there. So we got flour, sugar, baking powder, salt. Um, we've got cinnamon, allspice, and ginger. Now I just want to say a quick thank you to to Nana um, because it's actually. This is an adapt adaptation. If you watch previous broadcasts, sometimes uh, you'll see Nana brings these giant boards of banana bread. So this recipe is an adaptation of Nana's banana bread, which uh, we'll be doing, I'm sure, one of these shows. So, Code, can we get a look inside this? So what I want to do is I'm using this whisk. So I'm going to use two different attachments here. I'm going to start with the balloon whisk. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to imagine this is going to like sift these ingredients together. So I'm going to turn this on, start up, starting off slow, and just bring it up to speed. And that's going to bring all of that. It's going to incorporate my baking powder, the salt, all these incredible flavors. It's going to bring it right together. Let me tip it a little bit there, son. So it's bringing that together nicely. And it'll break down. If there's any lumps or chunks in there, it'll make sure it's nice and clean. Um, one of the things I get asked about a lot, uh, you'll see sifted flour. Now, if you have time to sift your flour, that's great. Sifting is a great way to incorporate dry ingredients as well. But one of the main reasons that sifting was done was uh, back when the quality of flour was maybe a little questionable. Yeah. There'd be like little stones maybe unmilled uh, flour, unmilled wheat. Yep. So that's why you have to sift. It's not 100% necessary, um, and it's just one of those time things. Okay. It, you don't have to do it. So that is basically our, that's come together. Now all those dry ingredients are incorporated, and I'm gonna switch from the balloon whisk to a paddle. Now if you're just joining us, I wanna let you know, we always do wild to table recipes but we've had so many requests to do sweet recipes. We thought today, let's take something, let's take a harvest squash, let's make a quick bread. Look at this beautiful quick bread we whipped up this morning, loving it. Uh, and then let's give two recipes. So you can do something that you could maybe just have with coffee with this yeah. quick bread, but we're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it into banana bread. Which I can't wait for. Yes. <laughs> So uh, the next thing, Bailey, we can go, uh, I'll talk you through this a little bit. So we can go so with some uh, liquids in there. Now we have this butter, so we need uh, about half of this. So this is just melted butter. It's not looking too attractive right now, but it's melted butter. You'll notice melted butter has three different levels. So I'm just gonna put that in. That's, uh, we're gonna put about a half cup in there. Okay. That's good. Uh, three eggs can go in. And I'm just gonna warm up my coffee here. Yep, three eggs in. Um, now, I'm gonna put a little bit of lemon in. Uh, I'm just gonna give that lemon a roll first, and then slice, and, oh man, it smells so good. Just a little squeeze of lemon, making sure no seeds go in. I just put my hand underneath it there. So what you, with the lemon juice, you, again, you just have all these elements of cuisine. So you have a little bit of acid with the salt, you have a little bit of uh, seasoning, and uh, the lemon acts a little bit the way that vanilla acts. And I'm gonna add just a little spot of vanilla here. Oh, it so, good. so a little bit of, uh, that'd be about a teaspoon of vanilla. Gotta add that to the recipe. Um, now, uh, what are we, so we've got lemon, salt, butter, yeah. baking powder. So now the big thing, and this is the exciting thing. This is what we worked so hard on this morning. Um, this is this beautiful pumpkin mixture. So I can put in, look at this. Like, come on. the way this is coming together this morning. We're kind of adding things to the recipes, having a look around. It's kind of real, like all the fly is going off. And at the same time, I'm watching the beer. Yeah, I'm watching the beer. 
Okay, so there's that beautiful pumpkin puree, or in this case, a squash puree. Could be either. Very similar flavors. And we'll just take and we'll put that in. The consistency of that is awesome. Right? It's just like, it reminds you of what like a, ban a banana puree would yeah. be like. So yeah. it's very similar in that regard. It looks like that would honestly, just a, a side note, that would be like great for like baby food. Oh, That's yeah. Baby food, I mean, you want to talk about nutrition. This is just awesome. So now all of our wet ingredients are now in, and we're just going to start again, a little slow. That's it, eh? It's just one shot. Yeah. Now this is not going to be, this is going to be very, uh, it won't be, uh, it won't be very liquid, so it's going to be very pasty. Yeah. But you get a lot, you get a lot of yield from just that one pumpkin. Yeah, so from just that one squash, this is a buttercup squash, from just that one squash, we can do two full breads. Wow. So that's coming together nicely. When it comes together, what we're going to do now, do you want to do this in the cast iron or do you want to do, we can do it in a, let's do it in, let's do it, you know, most of you at home will have this. I, I got to tell you, uh, this is, uh, this pan is made by Lodge. So Lodge Cast Iron makes these gorgeous loaf pans. Um, and what I'm going to do now, if you're looking for a, uh, a loaf pan, one of the things I have to recommend, um, so this is actually a Cuisinart loaf pan. What they've done is they make this a heavy bottom pan. So one of the problems with a really thin baking pan is they have hot, they kind of have hot spots yeah. and they don't radiate the heat very well. I love this. So that's just about done. What I've got is I've just got some cooking spray. Now you can use butter and just butter and flour this, but I think most people at home are gonna use cooking spray. Nothing wrong with using cooking spray. You're just taking and you've got an aerosol of the uh, fat. Um, if you have a chance, you know, one cooking spray I love to use is this. They've got coconut cooking spray. Oh yeah, that's uh, good. So I'm just gonna turn this up high for a second. And that done. So you can see the consistency there. Um, just need that uh, spatula. Don't worry, get all that off first. So with all of that off, we don't want to waste any of this. We want that all, all in the pan. And you can you can smell the spice. Yep. It's very mild. It's not too intense. You can really smell the allspice. Yeah, the allspice is, is and you have to be careful with allspice. Allspice yeah. is an extremely potent spice. Um, most of the spices we have, almost all of them, we you know really work to uh, to grind them from fresh. So these are all ground from fresh. So I'm literally going to put this in. I feel like a little kid. I don't want to lick the bowl and spoon. <laughs> right? <laughs> Looks so good. Now you can see the color that that uh, the brown sugar made that bad look at that oh my gosh so this is pretty exciting so as like a, a coffee cake or as a as a finished cake this is quite nice as you can see uh, sliced into fingers or just sliced into slices but what this will do as a bread pudding is be completely transformed so so literally all you do is just press it down and find all the edges. Um, just try and smooth it out a little bit so that the top is, if you're gonna serve it, uh, if you're not gonna cut it up like we are for the banana bread, but you just wanna smooth it out a little bit. And what do you put this in the oven? So this is gonna go, uh, we're actually gonna do this on the barbecue. Okay. Um, and what we'll do is we'll put this in at 350. Um, but actually, you know what, for today, let's put it in. We'll, we'll do this at 325. Uh, convection and one of the most important things which I didn't do but I'm doing now is make sure to preheat your oven so I'm just gonna set this aside and that oven when it's ready it'll let me know it's ready to go and uh, you, know, you know what I'm thinking what's that? gonna be a really cool thing I want to do is we make this great gingerbread recipe yeah I'm thinking as we get closer to uh, Christmas here we should make a gingerbread we're, we, we try to make these uh, masterpiece yeah, gingerbread houses every year. It's baking as cool as we can get them. I think that'd be pretty cool. I think it'd be very cool. How to make gingerbread. If you can, uh, Bay, I need that uh, um, bowl, so if you can clean that up. 
Now listen, if now, so that's the basis for our bread. Now I'm gonna teach you the basis for some of your most favorite things. So for example, ice cream. Yep. Creme anglaise. It's the custard cream base. So good. It's so delicious. It's one of those things you go into a restaurant and you're like, it's like those lava cakes, right? Like that's yep. not creme anglaise. Like yep. when you break it open, no, but one of the things that you do have from creme anglaise is uh, creme brulee. Oh, yeah. Creme reverse caramel. So all of these kind of really posh, uh, really kind of exciting uh, desserts, they have their roots in a very, very humble, very simple yeah. recipe. You grab me that pan. So the very first thing that you want to do is you have to bring the cream and milk up to temperature. Yeah, what kind of cream are you using? So I'm using a combination of milk, so that's 2% milk, and I'm using whipping cream as well. And you can make uh, creme anglaise or uh, English custard cream with just milk, but I like it to be more rich, and specifically my wife likes it to be more rich, so I'm just, I'm just this is actually her recipe. So um, this makes the best creme brulee, the best creme uh, anglaise, and for this purpose, it is on point. So I've got one full liter of cream. That's four cups of cream. If there are any desserts that uh, you find folks want us to do, just let us know in the comments. We know we get a lot of uh, suggest people suggesting that they want us to do desserts. If there's a specific dessert that you want us to do, let us know. You know, there are probably a hundred thousand desserts out there. So yep. you know, if there's one that you just you can't quite get right, or you have no idea how to do, or there's these techniques you don't quite understand, yep. put it in the comments and we'll do it. Or Absolutely. What you want us to try? Because we love seeing your guys' oh, yeah. recipes. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this is two cups of milk. So we've got four cups of cream, two cups of milk, and then I've got again that's that pure bourbon vanilla and in this case I'm gonna add just a bit more about a tablespoon I want that really rich vanilla flavor to come through um, if you have the luxury of a vanilla bean yeah this is oh, the yeah. time to use a vanilla bean if you're, you're going to infuse it so as we heat this up uh, what's gonna happen is that milk and cream are gonna become infused with that vanilla flavor yeah. so if you have a vanilla bean take it and split it down the center Take out the seeds using the back of the knife and put the bean and the seeds and everything in the milk. And as it heats up, it's gonna get all that flavor all through this liquid. I remember the first time I did that, putting the bean and using it, how potent the bean is. Oh, there, well, it's exceptional. There's really nothing like it. So I've got this uh, set over here. We're just gonna turn, the, uh, turn this on. Um, so I've got, uh, I want to make sure, I don't want to bring this to boil. All I want to do right now is just raise the temperature. So I'm going to put it on four. I've got an induction burner here. Um, we like using induction sometimes, especially for this application. Uh, if you've never used induction before and have any questions, by all means, put them in the comments below. Basically, induction works so good because it allows you to get instant heat, but it's extremely safe. So if you have young kids, you got to make, you know, induction works How great. How long will that take? So this won't really take that long to heat up. We just want this to come up to a temperature uh, so that we can temper the egg yolks. And that's going to be our next task. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Um, the induction is so cool because uh, the technology is fairly new. And what it does is that they always tell you you need yeah. a special pot or something to use. But all you need is iron in the pot. So in some way or form, there needs to be iron in it. Yep. And what it does is it activates those iron molecules and it starts making them jump around and hit each other and creates heat, basically. And that's yep. how induction works. I don't know how exactly they do that. It's magnetic, eh? Yeah. It's literally magnetic. magnetic. There you go. Really? So, yeah, it is. So what Bailey's going to do is he's going to separate a dozen eggs. So there's a dozen eggs in this recipe. This and is the, uh, the tricky part. This is the tricky part. Okay, well, we'll see how tricky it is. Okay, so what you want to do, something that, uh, here, let's put this here. So we'll put, uh, let's put the egg yolks here. So if you just literally take and then split the egg in half and then just kind of, I like doing, yeah, there you go. Okay, so don't put it in there. Like, do you have a, what do you have in there? Is that a yolk? No, no. Would you, did you, did you? Okay. That was the trash. No, no, we need the yolks, dude. Oh, I thought you wanted the eggs. Okay. You're fine. Catastrophe. Okay, no, that's good. So keep going. 
Um, now, one of the things, this is not wasteful because, uh, now I'll show you, if you do have a problem, so let's just say, so Bailey, uh, the egg split on him here, you can just put, oh, no, we can't. We're going to have trouble with this one too. Okay, so we're going to put this in. So this doesn't become a waste problem. Um, one of the things that you can do with this, and we'll be doing it this morning, is all of these egg yolks, they can just be reserved for an omelet. I haven't mastered the craft of cracking an egg on a flat surface. i got to do the edge thing. So we're putting and separating the egg yolks. You need a dozen egg yolks. And the thing about the egg yolk is that it's just super, super rich. There you go. <laughs> now, once again, you can do this. And, Sin, do you think I should make them whisk this by hand or, or use the machine? I don't know. We might be a long time. So, how, how did you do it in the 50s? In the 50s? I don't know. They had mixers in the 50s. Um, so using the balloon whisk, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put about a half a cup of white sugar into the mixer. And that sugar, the reason I'm putting this, this is one of the, the beautiful things about, uh, thing about Crown Anglaise, is it's just a couple simple ingredients. With the white sugar into the bottom, important to make sure that you're using a really clean uh, cookware. How are we doing there, buddy? Yeah. Good, you're making it right yeah. through. Um, so, you know, uh, it's difficult to make a, a good recipe without breaking a few eggs, <laughs> right? That's to make a good omelet, you gotta break I, a few why, eggs. That's why I did that, so you could say that. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so. What we're going to do is a technique that uh, the French refer to as blanchir. So what we're literally doing is, we, and this is a really important step when you're making creme anglaise, because of the fact that it adds volume, it changes the texture, and literally begins to prepare the sugar and the egg yolks to be cooked. So we're almost done there, a couple left. Uh, now I'm going to pop this in the oven, we've just reached 325. And that quick bread, we're going to have that on for an hour. So if you're just joining us, we're working on a spiced pumpkin quick bread. Uh, and then we're going to turn that quick bread into a bread pudding. Um, I'll let you, code if you want to slip in here and chat. Uh, or actually, one of the things, I'm going to, I need this egg yolk, so I'm going to pull that out. There's a perfect example of what you can do. You can actually hold yeah, the egg yolk pretty effectively. So uh, Bailey had dropped one in here. So if you just literally reach in and they will stay, yeah, you can literally pick it up. It's also a good way to separate it if you want. So that needs to go now because we've opened that, that can go directly in the fridge bay. Make sure to refrigerate the eggs as soon as they're, uh, as soon as they're opened up. Yep. And let's just clean this up. And so what we've got there is we've got a dozen Oaks. So this is something, Bay. if you want to get on the camera there, this is something we really want to show everybody. Um, so as you start to mix, and we're just going to wait for Bay to get on the camera. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so, no. So in goes the egg yolks. And I will, as soon as I start this up, Bay. Eh? So egg yolks in, and let's just turn this on. I want you to see what this kind of starts looking like. And as I turn it up, and I'm gonna start whisking that. And basically I'll know when that's done, when the uh, color is more blonde than it is yellow. And also I'll show you the texture, I'll use the whip the wire whip, and I'll pick that up, and you'll be able to see the texture of what we're looking at here. Now, how's our uh, cream mixture coming along here? It's heating up nicely. Well, can we talk to them a little bit about what we're actually thinking about, which is whitetail? Whitetail. You guys, <laughs> listen, you and Bay talk whitetail. Okay. I'm going to run out. i got to grab a dish, or I guess we'll use this dish. Eh? No, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, so uh, whitetail for us. Yeah, yeah you shoot. So, it, so it's, been, it's been a long week because we've been on hold for whitetail because it's been gun season here. So in- Muzzleloader. Yeah, muzzleloader yep. season. Yep. So 
here in Ontario where we are, you're not allowed to use a bow during muzzleloader season, so they get a week to go out and enjoy their muzzleloader season. So we've been on hold for a week, basically. We've yeah, been it's interesting here watching bucks run by and, and hearing blasts in the yeah. distance. It's it, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's an interesting thing, you know. At first, I thought, well, you know, because I I know in a lot of places in the U.S. you can use the lesser weapon. Yeah, you can use the lesser weapon. Yeah. Uh, but one nice thing about separating them way that we do here is it does give the muzzleloader people, yep. uh, folks, the opportunity to hunt completely unencumbered by, yep. bow, by bow hunters. Well, and the fun thing now that we've been just sitting here basically watching the deer from our back porch is that you get to enjoy watching the deer. As we know, the rut is kicking up. Yep. I watched two does out here the other day, and they're doing all their rut activity. They're making the, they're going to all the scrapes, yep. walking around with their tails straight out, and yep. then you see a buck running behind them, maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, it's really cool to just watch the behavior change. And I know we're going to have our work cut out for us because by the time we get back in the stand on Monday, I think the rut's going to be in full swing. So they're going to be off in the woods somewhere and then maybe we'll get a glimpse of a few bucks. Well, yes, Cindy. Okay. Hi, Finley. Hi, Finley. <laughs> How you doing, honey? Hi, Finn. So Finley, uh, Dakota. That's my youngest daughter. Yeah. Yep, she's two years old. I have two daughters, Charlie and Finley. One is three and a half and one is two, and they love to watch us cook. Yeah. <laughs> so here's, this is exciting. I love this. This is the best part of uh, sharing this with you. Come have a look at this. Oh, yeah, look at that. Now this, this is perfect texture. And if you can, Bay, I'm going to turn it off. And you can do this by hand. It just, Matt, you can imagine how long this uh, this mixer has been going for. You oh, are you kidding hand. me? Look at that texture. Cindy, you can just shout out from over there. This is good. Uh, we did a good job, didn't we, hon? Look at this. So this is what you're looking for. So you see that texture? Look at that. It's voluptuous. There's air in there. Isn't that gorgeous? So that is a perfect blanchir. So you, you wait, you notice the change in color as well. So that previous color, that was very orange. Uh, and if it was farm fresh eggs, which it will be here at the Collins Farm soon, very soon. Um, it would be even more orange. But at, you know it's done by two things. First of all, by that texture. Yep. See the way it's ribboning. It's ribbons. You can see those air bubbles in there too. You can see the air and it's changed completely in color to that beautiful blonde. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> love, love, love food. So now let's check this. I'm gonna check the temperature over here. And cool, eh? So code, here's a great thing. Can we can we see this steam here? Can we see that steam coming off there as I stir that? Can you see that? So that steam is a great indicator of temperature. Um, this should be, if you poke your finger in it, should be something that is hot but not like scalding. Um, we don't want to scald the milk. We don't want this to come to a boil at all. So what happens now? This is the exciting part about creme anglaise. You get to be a little bit of a sci mad scientist. So bring it over here. And this is a cool little procedure here. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a whisk and you literally temper. So we're tempering those eggs. Yeah, we use wood, okay, for this purpose. Um, so we're going to temper the eggs. Now this is important. As you begin to whisk, you want to pour into that, into the eggs. And what you want to avoid, you want to slow pour, make it a mess here, slow pour, um, let me set that aside, it's not too bad. Slow pour so that you don't scramble the eggs. Yeah, you can pour that in there for me. Yeah, pour a little faster, that lip is a little fussy. Go ahead, there you go. Oh yeah. You just needed a professional chef to do it. There you go. Yeah, you're dumping it too, just so you know. Am I? <laughs> yeah. Pour the rest in. Dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it. Okay. So what happens is as you continue to stir, as you continue to move that around and slowly add that hot milk and cream mixture, 
what happens is the eggs they temper. The beautiful thing, eggs are an incredible thing. They're one of the things that honestly, they eggs literally make baking possible. So I'm gonna put this back on the heat now. And this is gonna go back in. I'm gonna turn that on again, that low temperature. Pour that in. You see how it's kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. look at that. Can we like see that code? Just for texture, son, look at that. It's frothy, it's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. Kind of looks like, uh, like eggnog. So it looks, it does, and actually this is a, thank you, this is a base for eggnog. This is your eggnog. Absolutely. Oh, okay. So that's, so all you need to do is just add some rum and then you have eggnog. <laughs> so here's the key now, when you get to this step, um, you don't want to continue to whisk, okay? okay. Yep. So whisking, by virtue of its design, adds air. That's, the, that's what a whisk okay. does. So I want to switch. And if you can, switch to something that's wood, okay? And then you want to... Why, mean, why wood? Uh, because when we do, we'll do a pass like this, Dakota, let's have a quick look. We'll do a pass like this, and at one point, see the way that's still running a little bit? A little bit. Um, you'll know that it's done by how it uh, sticks to the wood. Oh. So we're going to do little figure eights here. <laughs> you can do a figure eight. Uh, I don't think I can manage. Okay. <laughs> Stir that. Most important thing when you're doing this creme anglaise is you really want to make sure not to leave it alone. Um, so this is a base. Uh, you could add some cornstarch to this and make a beautiful pudding. Uh, at this point, you could add a variety of things. Oh, yeah. You could add, we've added a yeah. crushed um, candy canes for Christmas time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've added, you can add espresso. You can add chocolate. So whatever you love, this is the time when it's warm to infuse that. Yeah. So this is the base. This is your creme anglaise base. And we use cream, milk, eggs, sugar, and vanilla. Five ingredients, that's all it took to make What this. I would do with this is uh, put some coconut in there and some cornstarch, make like coconut pudding. <laughs> okay, that sounds interesting, Bailey. That's all I have to say about that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working, as you're doing that, I'm going to work over here on our base. Um, Code, if you want to stay on that for just a minute, um, I'm going to start working on the base, which is the, uh, the bread pudding. Base for eggnog, base for ice cream. Um, think about how many different possibilities uh, you know you can kind of enjoy. Uh, to make it eggnog, you know, you can spice it, add some uh, add some flavor to it. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm just slicing up this beautiful bread we did this morning. Now, what you'll find is it's really important to let that cool. So let's have a look here. You can see the texture of that bread. So nice thing about doing a banette or a doing a bread pudding out of quick breads like this is you'll see how much more dense that bread is than say for example, like I'll grab a loaf of fresh baked bread over here. Um, this fresh uh, baked bread uh, is, you know, it's lighter in texture. Um, it has lots of air pockets. So what you'll notice is that um, when you're making this, so a regular bread is, is very, and it's very soft or very, you know, the, it just, where this has a lot of firmness. The difference is that this is going to stand up really, really nicely as we begin to put it into the, uh, into the bread pudding. So I've got nice big chunks here. I love this, the way that it looks kind of chunky. Um, it's, uh, it's something I do about one inch by one inch. I don't know if you can see that to Dakota. I'll make sure you can. Um, notice I'm using a serrated knife. So that serrated knife is really important when you're cutting bread. Um, it just helps you pass through a little easier. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do when you do this is any little bits that come off, you're going to want to make sure to put those in. So don't think that any, you don't want to waste a single crumb. And then what I like to do is just begin to arrange this bread. Are you seeing how this is coming together? 
I mean, seriously, this is incredible. If you want to make a delicious recipe for this uh, Thanksgiving, I think this is it. Now, uh, for those of you in the United States, um, here in Canada, we've already had our Thanksgiving. Um, so we are doing this little bit of a celebration in honor of all of our... That's yeah, good. How's it coming? Mom, Mom, look at me and take it off, so I'm taking it off. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> So you, you can just, you can just, here, I'll get you a, a charger and you can set it on it. Um, so at this point with that creme anglaise finished, go ahead and set it down. Um, Bay, I want you to grab a spoon and, and just try it. Code, I think you should come over and try this too. You got to try it. Um, make sure that, you know, when you're cooking, always be trying, always be trying uh, because it just, it makes a difference whenever you know what's going into oh, yeah. it, oh, right? Is it like delicious or what? You just grab me a cup, some rum, and I'll pour that in on the couch. <laughs> right? So listen, you know when you're when you're live with the outdoor chef. Um, want to take a, you know want to thank uh, Botech uh, in a huge way um, because yep. uh, they uh, host us, carry this program. Right. And, and yep. made this incredible platform um, looking into what you want to do. You want to be able to watch what you want to watch, yep. when you want to watch it. Um, and however long you want to watch it. And for however long you want to watch it. Yeah. And what we love about this is that we don't have to rush. We don't need to rush through any of this. Are you guys seeing how this One is doing? One of my favorite things and that we always say to each other afterwards is the thing that we love is how it's interactive. Yes. We love talking to people that otherwise... We'd have to maybe wait till we were at ATA or something to talk to you, yeah. right? But right now, we can talk with, amongst ourselves right here, right now, and it's interactive. We can answer your questions and help you along and just enjoy talking with each other. Yeah. So are you seeing... Mo says there's nothing better than a man that can cook. Oh, yes, thank you. What's your name? Mo. Mo, thank you, dear. That's very nice. Thank you. Um, look at this. Honestly, I think, like, can you honestly believe how beautiful so like first right this is like delicious it looks like it's something out of like a dr yeah, zeus mountain of, goodness. mountain of goodness hey sen there's another good t-shirt mount yeah. mountain of goodness um here we go so again i'm not wasting a single little bit of that and i think we're going to need a close-up base so if you want to grab that camera i want everybody at home to get this as close to uh Hey, pastry chef, stay out of it. Okay, so um, it's our hey, that's right. This is a Rocky Mountain version. I love it. It's a Rocky Mountain bread pudding. Rocky Mountain bread pudding. Okay, so let's look at what's that? <laughs> they won't overflow. Okay, so uh, man, she's right all the time. She's right all the time, though, isn't she? Um, you ready? Yeah, get a close up on this. So we got this. Oh, yeah, oh awesome. man, that's just gorgeous. So you can see um, one of the things you always want to look for is just to make sure it doesn't go to uh, basically like a scrambled eggs. So I'm going to pour this over top. Get now, ready. the nice thing about this this cream is this cream will firm up. So as we rebake this now. This will literally turn into a beautiful yeah. pudding in the bottom. So it and smells good. By all that bread. So I don't, I'm not going to rush this point right here. We're just going to literally, you know what I want to do with this? Um, if you have one at home, uh, this is uh, a fine strainer. Uh, you can get really inexpensive fine strainers. Uh, but uh, this is a fine sieve or a fine chinois. And this was the one uh, element that I forgot to teach you that I don't want to miss. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pass this through the chinois. We'll just literally pour it in. Set that aside. And then what we'll do here is, you notice that beautiful thing pouring out? Just tap it a little bit. 
And this will, what happens is anything that you don't want going in, you'll notice there's a little bit of uh, film, let's just say, and you can see it in the bottom of that. That is removed. And what that is, is that's a texture thing. Yeah. So it's, we're always thinking about texture really because um, as much as flavor is really important, texture is equal to flavor because you can have something that tastes great but with bad texture, yep. it just becomes totally unpleasant. That just goes back to the levels, guys. Yep. Levels of little increments of things that you do to make a dish better. Yep. So we're just going to finish. I'm just ladling this on. Um, any of our Rocky Mountain uh, bread pudding here that's on top, imagine it's going to be like, I would say, crusty bits on top with a beautiful pudding underneath. Those are my favorite ones. Yeah, this is like watching the fireplace. Honestly, <laughs> it's that good. That's good. You hang on there. Um, so now this is going to go uh, into the oven. How does that look? Son? Is that good? A bit more? Uh, I think, I think so. No, no, no more. Easy, Anna. She wants it though. I know she does. She wants, she needs, Cindy needs to be right. She's going to be wrong this time. Uh, so what you see is I've got about uh, maybe a, a half an inch, a quarter inch. Yeah from the edge. Now some of the bread is going to soak that up, but what happens when you bake it is it kind of expands a little bit. Yep. So keep that in mind so it doesn't spill over. Little, little tip, um, put this on a baking sheet before you go in. So baking sheet with sides, it's like, no, it's okay, we don't have one, it's buried over here. So we just moved the farm, we're getting organized. Um, but put it on a baking sheet so that if it does spill over, it's not going to make a disaster of your like oven. Now keep in mind, this, this can go out to, to our coyote uh, barbecue. Um, if you can, for Thanksgiving, do a couple things maybe out on the barbecue. It's a huge help. But I think that this is absolutely stunning. I want to have a quick peek in here. It said Rocky Mountain bread pudding and it started snowing. It, did it really? Yeah, it's yeah, snowing. It's snowing. Nice. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take this one out too. We've got lots of uh, photos of this one. So I'm just going to take a slice of this bad boy, that's so nice. Um, and I want to show you one more finish just before we close. I just have to grab a, you want a cast, iron? cast iron black plate, would be perfect. Uh, so Dakota's just running out to our new shop. We've got a brand new shop. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're just joining us, uh, or if you've been watching us for the past six months uh, during our lives, we've got a brand new farm. We're so excited about it. Um, this is a place where we are going to be able to do target archery at uh, 100, 120 yards. Yep. We're going to be, we, we can hunt this property. Um, we can fish on this property. Um, most importantly, we are going to have the biggest, and I think when I say the biggest, yeah. we are going to have the biggest garden you have ever seen, possibly. Oh, Thanks, buddy. Sure. Um, so what I'm going to do here is an um, this is another way that this can be enjoyed. I'm just going to take and slice off. So if you want something, this is great just as a, as a simple bread to, you know, to maybe enjoy with uh, um, a coffee or a tea. But you can also take a simple slice like this and just on the plate it goes. Uh, I just love this because it's so... I, you know, I hate to use the word pure, but it's pure. It's pure because it's so simple. Yep. Just want to clean this up. Um, you know, the last step of plating, sometimes sometimes the food is so good it doesn't really make it there. You know, and I understand that um, because, uh, you know, you got, you got kids or, you know, adults, anybody uh, around and they want in on it, right? They want it. But for me, and this is uh, just a little spoonful, just just a little a spoonful of this makes for a great finish. Um, so that's something that can go out. How are we doing there, Code? How does that look good? It's just, we'll give a little bit over the edge there. There we go. Oh, I love that. Okay. So that is, for me, a couple brilliant ways to be able to enjoy um, this recipe. So this recipe, we will go and we will quickly write it. Um, now that we've got it proven, uh, right here, 
on the outdoor chef uh, Saturday mornings for Surefire Saturdays. Yep. Um, professional chefs testing new recipes um, using, you know, classic techniques. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're pretty pumped about next Saturday. Oh, we are. Yeah, next Thanks. Saturday we're doing a Thanksgiving special. If you're just joining us, we're doing a Thanksgiving special, two to three hours oh. long. We're going to teach you from soup to nuts. We want to teach you everything you need to know. Oh, we, sh we should do a soup. Yep. And we should do spice nuts. Spice nuts. There okay. You go. That's perfect. So we're two recipes we're definitely going to do. Soup and nuts. Soup and nuts. I love it. But we're going to try and give you all the tools you need to create the best, the Thanksgiving that all of your family are going to be talking about until next year yep. when you host it again because you're going to have no choice. <laughs> no more dry turkey. Yep. You won't run out of stuffing, believe me. We're doing stuffing and dressing. Yep. You're going to get them both. Um, we'll do a soup. Yeah, we'll do a soup. We'll do yeah. spice nuts. Perfect for yep. serving before a meal. Get the palate going. We're going to caramelize them. We're going to salt them. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to do some dressing, right? We'll do some yep. dressing. Uh, our, our port cranberry sauce. Oh, the oh, port yeah. cranberry sauce. You're going to love it. With whole spices in it. That, yeah, that well, yeah nice we mull it. It's so beautiful. Um, tell you what. What do you want to see? Yeah, what do you yeah. want? What do you want to see? Yeah. Vegetables, I'm thinking about teaching green beans, blanching, yams. chilling, yams. yams. Could be yams. Yep. I'll tell you what, comment in the link below or in the space below in this uh, broadcast. Yep. Let us know what you want to see. If there's anything, you know what my grandma used to make? What's that? What? That thing with the grapes and the marshmallows. Oh, what? yeah. Ambrosia. Ambrosia. We won't be teaching ambrosia. But my God, was it ever good. I used to love yep. that. That was crazy. Um, and maybe, maybe we can get Cindy yep. to uh, make her bourbon pecan pie. Oh, bourbon which, pecan pie. Yeah, yep. say it again. Say bourbon it slow. Pecan bourbon pecan and bourbon. Pie. If, our, if our friend from Kentucky is still, uh, still watching, yep. um, we love bourbon. Oh, so okay. bourbon pecan pie, it is the perfect combination of corn syrup caramelized with bourbon, toasted pecans, yep. and the best short crust. And I mean the best. The best, no. I'm saying it slower, right? Slowing it down. Um, the best short cut crust recipe yep. uh, that you'll ever have. We use um, butter and shortening, both. Uh, so it's both flaky yep. uh, with tons of flavor. Oh, yeah. And until next week, guys, be sure to check out our live hunts. We know yes. we're back in the stand Monday morning, and we're going to try with the realm. realm. We've realm. got the realm, <laughs> and uh, with the realm, we listen. Th this uh, new smart bow from Bowtech. Um, yeah, it's just incredible. It's it's setting new standards yep. again. The rain last year, number one bow. Yep. Yep. Realm, I'm calling it I'm right calling now. It now. It's going to be number, number one bow. Yep. Number one bow because of precision, because of the technology. Um, when you have someone like myself, I'm all about really taking and really. I, I, so I don't Dakota's like nickname is the mechanic, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and it's both a blessing and a curse because every single thing, like, he has to understand the finite details yeah. of it. So. <laughs> and I'm yeah. not okay with just, you know, and it's not that it's something's wrong with it, but I like, you know, if you have a pie plate, or if you hit a pie plate, you can hunt a deer. But I like to be able, it, it, it bugs me in a weird way if I can't hit the center of the pie plate with three or four arrows all at once. And a grouping. Me, and yep. a grouping. And let me tell you, this new bow from Bowtech, the round, <laughs> it, uh, it gets it done every yep. time. Yeah. When you're flinging arrows, you're flinging them with confidence. Yep. Um, That's the biggest thing, eh? Oh, well, it's like, yeah, you know, if anybody's ever played any sports, and it's not just relegated to sports, it's whatever you do, yeah, your yeah. thing. You know that any one of those things. I remember the first time I started playing hockey, I started playing hockey late. I used to, I would skate, and I'd stop by hitting the boards. But in year after I scored on my, <laughs> after I scored on my own team many times in tournaments, um, I got a little bit better, and then yeah. a little bit better. And then that... Then I would, she's then laughing. she's still laughing. And then I would step on the ice and I would gain confidence. My point is this, that if you've ever, any, any activity you've done, when you gain confidence, you can approach it in a different way. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things, uh, you know, as a professional chef, you'll notice uh, we use, you know, like the best cutting boards, the best knives, the best equipment. 
and it's because they produce the best results. Results. It's results driven. So just like uh, a professional chef with a professional chef knife, yep. a hunter with the new realm in your hands, it's going to be, uh, it's going to feel like an extension of you. So um, check out the new realm. Yep. Um, we'll be checking it out live. Uh, we're wishing yep. our good buddy uh, Tim and Nate uh, all the best they're there. Out, they're out there in South Dakota. On yes, Cindy. Day. What's that? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And just a uh, just a reminder uh, to reach out to uh, uh, current or former former service members of any uh, yes. any nation's uh, military. Thank them for their service. Thank them for their service. We wouldn't enjoy the freedoms uh, that we do enjoy. Nope. Wouldn't enjoy this lifestyle. Wouldn't enjoy this beautiful bread pudding. Um, these are the things in life that uh, are preserved, and they're preserved by. Uh, and the reason folks. this day exists is because we we can't forget. Thank you, yeah, thank you, Stephen. Right, Collins, we can't absolutely. forget. And that's why this day exists because we cannot forget about it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we're going to sign off now. Thank you for joining us for Surefire Saturdays. Yeah. Thank you for helping us take Saturdays back. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't mind, if you really enjoyed this broadcast, uh, go over to our YouTube channel, subscribe, yeah. let us know what you think. Uh, do us a favor. Tag a friend, yep. share the broadcast, and, uh, and let more people know about Surefire Saturdays yep. and the Outdoor Chef. And all these great recipes. And all these great <laughs> recipes. Remember, we've got now uh, several dozen. I think we've got about 36 or 37 recipes. So you can go back, watch yeah. the archive, check out the, the previous ones. Yeah. We've got wild-to-table recipes for turkey, for whitetail, for elk, for black yeah. bear. For rock dove, yeah, for over, so many different yeah. things. Head over to the YouTube channel, guys, and just literally get a um, pad of paper and write down all the tips and all the notes. And I promise you, at the end of, what, like you said, 30 or 37 videos, yep. you'll have a skill set that you didn't have before, and it's awesome. And a shout out to all of our partners, partners like Bowtech and Diamond and Vortex X and Dow. Honda, Excalibur. Yep. Uh, Sitka and help me out here. Groman knives, Eskif yeah, canoes. Yeah. There's so many people. Uh, Coyote Outdoor Living, check them out. Yep. Uh, Full Gore Milano, yeah, Staub and Zwilling. Uh, Lodge. Yeah, Lodge as well and Cuisinart. Check out all of these partners. Uh, they're what uh, makes this broadcast uh, possible. So yep. until next Saturday, Surefire Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern. Have a great week. And uh, keep on cooking. I'll keep and on eating. eating. <laughs> and don't touch this. <laughs>